Welcome to the Shika Serbu Motor Channel. The topic of this video is Variable Valvetrain Systems. Variable valve timing and variable valve lift are highly effective methods for improving engine output, reducing fuel consumption, and enhancing exhaust gas characteristics. This video showcases the necessity of variable valve timing and valve lift and variable mechanisms developed by various automotive manufacturers with ingenuity and creativity. First, let's review why the valve timing and valve lift are controlled. If you are familiar with these, please use the seek bar to skip this chapter. The variable valve train system is a device that alters two elements, valve timing and valve lift. Air has weight and is subject to inertia. Still air cannot start moving suddenly, and moving air cannot stop abruptly. When the intake valve closes at the piston lowermost position of the intake stroke, it traps the moving air within the intake port. To prevent this, the intake valve is retardedly closed to enhance the efficiency of the suction. However, when setting the valve timing to accommodate high engine speed, it can result in the reverse flow of intake air into the intake port during low engine speed. The variable valve timing system allows for advancing the valve timing during low engine speed and retarding the valve timing during high engine speed. When the valve lift is large, it allows for an increased intake of air volume during high engine speed. However, during low engine speed, the flow velocity decreases, leading to a decrease in intake air volume. The variable valve lift system is a device that adjusts the valve lift amount depending on the engine speed. This video introduces the operating principles of variable valve timing systems adopted by various manufacturers. However, please note that the representations in the video do not accurately replicate the actual device's shape and operation. In 1983, Alfa Romeo adopted the world's first electronically controlled variable valve timing system for the Spider Series 3. This system utilizes hydraulic pressure to move the helical gear inside the camshaft sprocket forward and backward, thereby rotating it and altering the phase between the camshaft and camshaft sprocket. The camshaft sprocket is fixed to the outer helical gear. So the crankshaft rotates the outer helical gear. The inner helical gear is meshed to the outer helical gear, and the camshaft is engaged with the inner helical gear via splines. Applying hydraulic pressure to the inner helical gear and moving it axially causes a change in the rotational angle with relative to the outer helical gear. The camshaft engaged with the inner helical gear rotates integrally with it thereby altering the phase of the camshaft relative to the camshaft sprocket. You can observe that the timing of valve opening and closing is different during the retard and advance phases. This system only switched between two stages, advance and retard. In 1986, Nissan adopted the NVCS, Nissan Valve Timing Control System, for the SR20 engine that has a similar mechanism to Alfa Romeo, marking the beginning of the generalization of the variable valve timing system. In 1989, Honda adopted the VTEC, Variable Valve Timing and Lift Electronic Control System, for the B16A engine. This system switches between a low-speed cam and a high-speed cam in response to engine rotation, enabling a two-stage switch of valve timing and valve lift. During low engine speeds, the low-speed cams push down the low-speed rocker arms, then low-speed rocker arms open the valves. The high-speed rocker arm is pressed down by the high-speed cam. However, the high-speed rocker arm idles without engaging. Once the engine speed reaches a specified value, the piston in the rocker arm is moved by engine oil pressure and locks the three rocker arms as a unit. This allows the movement of the high-speed rocker arm, which is pressed down by the high-speed cam, to transfer to the low-speed rocker arms, then the low-speed rocker arms open the valves. You can observe that the valve opening and closing timings, as well as the valve lift amounts, are different between high and low engine speeds. 
Today, VTEC has evolved to incorporate various functions, such as a VTEC that is variable valve timing mechanism, and three-stage VTEC that has three different CAM profiles. In 1991, Porsche adopted the Vario Cam for the 968. The valve timing is adjusted by changing the phase between the housing that rotates together with the camshaft sprocket and the vane that rotates together with the camshaft. When applying engine oil pressure to hydraulic chamber A and releasing the oil pressure in hydraulic chamber B, the vane and camshaft rotate in the advanced direction relative to the camshaft sprocket. Vario Cam allows for continuous variable adjustment of the valve timing. Afterward, various automotive manufacturers adopted similar mechanisms, including Nissan's CVTC and Toyota's VVTi. In 1996, Porsche adopted the VarioCam Plus for the 911, Type 996. The VarioCam Plus is a combination of VarioCam that has a variable valve timing mechanism and a cam switching mechanism. Similar to VTEC, the VarioCam Plus features two different cams, but the cam switching mechanism is located within the tappet instead of the rocker arm. During low engine speeds, the high-speed tappet and high-speed cam idle freely. During high engine speeds, a pin operated by engine oil pressure locks the high-speed tappet and low-speed tappet. In the year 2000, Subaru adopted a similar mechanism for the EZ30 engine. In 2001, Nissan adopted the electrically controlled variable valve timing mechanism, EVTC, for the VQ30 DD engine, which allows for quicker response and precise control compared to hydraulic systems. The inner gear of the camshaft sprocket engages with the outer gear of Part B. Additionally, the inner helical gear of the Part B engages with the gear of the camshaft, causing the camshaft sprocket, Part B, and camshaft to rotate as a single unit. When the valve timing is advanced, an electromagnetic clutch that is fixed to the cylinder head activates and applies brake to part A, which is engaged to the part B through a screw gear. In an actual engine, it rotates at high speed, but in this animation, the rotation is halted for the explanation. Therefore, the part A that is decelerated appears to rotate in the opposite direction. When part A reverses, part B, which is engaged to part A through a screw gear, moves towards the left side of the screen. As a result, since Part B is engaged to the camshaft through a helical gear, the camshaft rotates in the advanced direction relative to the camshaft sprocket. In the same year, BMW adopted Valvetronic for N42B18 and N42B20 engines. By changing the pivot position of the intermediate lever through the electric motor and intermediate cam, it is possible to continuously adjust both the valve timing and valve lift amount. Due to the ability to greatly reduce the opening of the intake valve, it is possible to control the engine speed and output without using a throttle valve. Initially, a throttle valve was equipped as a safety device upon adoption, but when it was introduced in other engines, the throttle valve was completely eliminated. You can observe that the valve opening and closing timings, as well as the valve lift amounts, are different between high and low engine speeds. In 2007, Toyota adopted the second-generation VVTIE for the 1URFSE engine. Similar to Nissan's EVTC, it is an electrically controlled variable valve timing mechanism. However, while Nissan uses an electromagnetic clutch, Toyota employs an electric motor. During normal operation, the electric motor rotates at the same speed as the camshaft sprocket, causing all the parts to rotate together as a unit. During the advancing phase, the electric motor is rotated faster than the camshaft sprocket. Gear C and B are connected to the electric motor with the eccentric shaft, causing them to rotate eccentrically in relation to the engaging gear C and A, and they rotate the gear A that is connected to the camshaft in an advanced rotation relative to the camshaft sprocket. In the same year, Nissan adopted the VVEL, Variable Valve Event and Lift, for the VQ37HR engine, which allows for continuous adjustment of valve timing and valve lift amount. 
the electric motor rotates the control shaft to change the pivot position of the rocker arm, thereby adjusting the valve timing and valve lift amount. In 2008, Audi adopted the AVS, Audi Valve Lift System, for the FSI 3.2 engine. The AVS slides and switches between the low-speed cam and high-speed cam on the camshaft. In 2012, Mercedes-Benz adopted Camtronic, which operates on a similar principle to AVS, for the M270 and M274 engines. In the same year, Alfa Romeo introduced a highly innovative multi-air engine. The camshaft opens the exhaust valve similar to a conventional engine. And also, it presses the plunger to generate hydraulic pressure that opens the intake valve. The control valve controls the open and close of the intake valve by releasing the hydraulic pressure. Currently, the control valve remains closed at all times, allowing all the hydraulic pressure generated by the plunger to open the intake valve. If the control valve remains opened at all times, the intake valve will not open at all as the hydraulic pressure does not rise. By leveraging this feature, the multi-air engine eliminates the use of a throttle valve. By controlling the opening and closing timing of the control valve, it is possible to adjust the timing and duration of the intake valve's opening and closing. MyVec, Mitsubishi Intelligent and Innovative Valve Timing and Lift Electronic Control System, is the collective term for Mitsubishi Motors Variable Valve Drive System. The moving pivot point type MyVec was adopted for the 4J1 engine in 2011. This system continuously controls the valve timing and valve lift amount by rotating the control shaft to move the pivot point of the center rocker arm. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to our channel. We'll see you in the next video.